Harsha Kohi, Nakakat Deja. Hello, my name is Deja uh, Gould. I am the language program manager for our tribe, the Confederated Villages of Lashon Nation. Our language being Chochenyo, which is the language that I just spoke. Our people are the original people um, from the East Bay. Uh, our tribe encompasses uh, Chochenyo and Karkin Ohlone, Plains Miwok, Bay Miwok, and Potwin. Our lineage comes from Jose Guzman, who was one of the last fluent speakers of our language. He died in the 1930s on Peralta Ranch in Pleasanton, California. So, Jose Tuhi, Kanakra Kat Cheyenne. My name is Cheyenne Zabeda. Uh, and I am the cultural resource manager for the Confederated Villages of Lashawn Nation. Um, and Deja is my sister, Karina Gold is my mother. Pretty much all the shorelines that are located in the Bay Area are uh, very important to, were very important and are very important. Um, speaking from the past, um, most shorelines were marsh areas, which is where we're at right now is the Wildcat Marsh area, which is not very marshy anymore. But it's where we would collect our foods. Um, it's where tuli would grow, which is a very important plant for us as California natives. It's what we made our boats out of, it's what we made our skirts out of, our beds out of, our houses out of, is very versatile plant. And there's also many different foods that grow in the marsh area, pickleweed, um, different plants that were important for weaving. That doesn't include all of the animal life that also lives in marsh areas that were also food um, and took care of the, the marsh. People are doing a lot of work now um, including ourselves in, in revitalizing marsh spaces uh, so that we are able to bring those foods back that, were tr that are traditional for us to use um, and animal life back that are also very important to the, the space around it, important to ecology. Yeah, I would say um, like dog bean, manzanita, elderberry, all of those plants also help with our, um, you know, our food palette and our tinctures, our teas making um, definitely um, was part of our herbal remedies. Willow was also a basket making plant that uh, we used, the willow shoots. So uh, all of those are very important to us as traditional people, but also it they are very helpful in wildlife because they help the insects and the smaller animals around and they also helped like clean and filter out through through the water systems the shorelines have definitely changed um going way back um you know, there's there's a lot of places that had more water. Uh, there were a lot more streams, a lot more creeks, a lot more places to just be. You know, um, our people were able to set out our tule boats, just walk right out and set them out. And we can go hunting. We can go traveling. Uh, we could do what we needed to do. And now um, the shoreline, uh, a lot of it is privatized and a lot of it has been destructed and a lot of our waterways have been either culverted or um, just sealed right up and so it, it's changed a lot um, and it's really sad to see a lot of the wildlife go it's really sad to see a lot of our traditional and native plants uh, no longer be where they were um, and it's we're, we're definitely still trying to forage for the things that used to be in abundance um, yeah, so I think for us, we've seen many changes, um, but at the same time, you know, we aren't that old, so we haven't been able to actually see, like, what we see are historical maps and where the shoreline used to come in, and now everything is filled in. There are freeways over um, the natural shoreline. And, you know, just businesses over the to the right of us now is the Chevron uh, oil and gas. Um, that is 
very detrimental to the life around it, including human life, not just animal life, human life, plant life, and animal life. Um, so us knowing um, and people who do work around climate change, um, knowing that we actually need to um, protect the life that's around us in order for us to survive, um, it's very sad to see that people are continuously, even knowing these things, even seeing and noticing these things, people continuing to um, destroy waterways or um, not care and just want to pave over things. But uh, the shoreline's going to come back, and I think that's what people need to prepare for. Again, like I mentioned um, in my introduction, uh, Jose Guzman is my great-great-grandfather. And we were very fortunate to have a linguist come along in the 1920s to actually record, written, and uh, vocally record uh, our language. Unfortunately, it's not our entire language. It's not every word that that we could ever need. And, and not only that is obviously in, in modern times, now we're gonna have to adapt the language to modern times, which is means creating new words. Like for Creek, the word is rume. For Tuli, the word is rocos. And then we have other plants. Yerba buena is uh, tarishmin. And we have willow, which is reaping. So we do have, fortunately, a lot of plant words and words for salmon, teamly. We we need to take care of what take care of you know what take cares of us. I can't think I'm saying that takes wrong. Care. Takes care of us as well. So like taking care of the shoreline is also taking care of our mother earth. It's taking care of yourself. It's taking care of the next you know seven generations and beyond. Taking care and watching out for um, how things change and um, how that also affects you as a neighborhood, um, as the people around you. Cleaning up, obviously, the shorelines um, because there, there's so much waste. There's people, we tend to just neglect the things that take care of us and reverting back to, like, you know, love yourself, love the people around you, and love the world around you because this is all we have. <laughs> Uh, I want to um, say that I totally agree with my sister here um, and also just say, you know, like um, we noticed that in the couple places that we've been in Richmond, um, that's here, the Wildcat Marsh, and then there's the other site that we went to that's near the San Pablo Creek. I think that people don't know that they are there. So just visiting and being with nature and near the waterways, um, I think it's something that people uh, forget to do, um, being that we're in cities now. Um, this, these are no longer village sites, even though they were traditionally village sites. Um, they're, they're paved over, this, they're cemented. So people forgot um, what it feels like to be um, in nature or to be near wildlife not touching wildlife, being near wildlife, being able to identify um, plants, being able to identify waterways. Um, a lot of indigenous people, um, including ourselves, can't name every waterway that we, have, that we have. And people used to be able to do that. So I think that it's, it's very important to say it, it's not only up to the indigenous people to to bring things back and to revitalize things in order for the the entire environment. It's, it's up to people who are now here, who live here, who call here their home to also figure out ways to um, reconnect with the land and to bring those things that are very important to our environments back.